Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Tonight we begin our celebration of the Lord's passion, death and resurrection. Journeying from the supper table to the cross, from the cross to Easter dawn, followers together in the way, exploring the truth, encountering life. This is the night when Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would betray him. This is the night when Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the night when Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, showing us how to reverence and tenderly love one another. This is the night Christ our Lord gave us this holy feast that those who break the bread and drink the cup may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and be partakers of his resurrection, coming at the last to his table in heaven. This is the night for watching and prayer, giving ourselves freely and trustingly to the demands of these great days confident in hope that those who die with Christ will surely live with him. Let us pray. The love of Christ has gathered us together into one. Let us praise and love the living God. Where charity and love are found, there is God. Therefore, when we are together, let us be careful not to be divided in mind. Let there be an end to bitterness and quarrels, an end to strife. And in our midst, see Christ our God. And in company with the blessed. Christ our God, where charity and love are found. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. If there is this love among us, all will know that we are his disciples. Christ, our Lord, hear the prayers of those who seek your peace. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin, and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
us pray together for unity and peace. O Christ, whose feet were caressed with perfume and a woman's hair, you humbly took basin and towel and washed the feet of your friends. Wash us also in your tenderness, purifying our touch of each other, that freely embracing your service, we may accept no other slavery in your name. We ask this through the merits of your cross and passion. Um, please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Exodus, the Haggadah. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you and the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. For the word of the Lord. Psalm 116, I will read to the colon if you would complete the verse. I am well pleased that he hath inclined his ear unto me. What reward shall I give unto the Lord? I will receive the cup of salvation. I will pass my vows now in the presence of all his people. Behold, O Lord, how that I am thy servant. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will pay my vows unto the Lord in the sight of all his people. Praise the Lord. Second reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. For the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of eternal glory. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. Hear the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple, if you have love for one another. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Please be seated. I'd like to take a moment this evening to reflect on something that we do every day of our lives, something that usually happens so naturally 
so regularly and unobtrusively we barely even notice or think about it. On average, a person will do it about 673 million times in their lifetime, and it will be just about the last thing we do before we die. In fact, you're doing it right now. I am, of course, talking not about checking your phone, but about breathing. Taking a breath, or rather taking lots of breaths, is fundamental to survival. It's fundamental to life. Importantly, when we speak about taking a breath, we don't mean just breathing in, we don't mean just breathing out. I can't say to myself, today I only feel like inhaling so I won't do any exhaling. You can't have one without the other. Breathing is a cycle, one that must be repeated over and over again in order for our bodies to function and stay alive. My breath oxygen oxygenates my blood and keeps all the other processes in my body going. Like my heartbeat, it establishes an underlying rhythm or tempo for my life. Scripture tells us that the church is also a body, and not just any body. We are the body of Christ. Not an inanimate corpse, but a living, moving, complex organism, comprising many different parts and animated by the very breath of God, the Holy Spirit. The Hebrew word for spirit, ruach, is also significantly the word for breath. The flow of this breath is both inward and outward, it gathers us in and it sends us out. As a church, we sometimes get bogged down in debates about where our focus should be. Should we be an outward-facing missionary community committed to evangelisation and to serving those most in need? Or are we a close-knit community of worshippers and seekers accompanying each other on an inward spiritual journey to the heart of our faith through prayer, contemplation, liturgy and the sacraments. But these are false distinctions. You cannot have one without the other, any more than you can have the inward breath without the outward breath, or vice versa. Each makes the other possible. Our scripture readings this evening contain some very important insights in what it means to be a living, breathing church. As Jesus and his disciples gather together in the upper room, this one last time before his death, he sets in motion a rhythm, a perpetual cycle that has sustained and animated the church through the centuries right to this very moment. Paul's account of this event in our epistle reading is, of course, the basis of the words of institution that we hear every Sunday as we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist, words that are so familiar that we perhaps fail to pay proper attention to them, just like we fail to notice our own breath. And yet the event that these words describe is as essential to the life of the church as our breath is to our own survival. On that night, as they gather together at the table, Jesus draws his friends into an extraordinary moment of intimacy and tenderness. And knowing that he is about to leave them, he gives them this precious gift, the gift of himself in the Eucharist, to sustain and nourish them. The disciples have no idea what's in store for them, but Jesus does. In the weeks and months and years ahead, they will be called to take the good news of Christ's life, death and resurrection to the ends of the earth, but they will also be called to take up their own crosses. It is no easy path we set out on when we choose to walk in the way of Jesus, and it's certainly not a path we are equipped to tread on our own, relying solely on our own skills or resources. When we come to the table, when we come to the Eucharist, we come acknowledging our own hunger and thirst, our own need to be nourished and sustained. The table is essentially a place of humility and vulnerability, a place where our deep needs are met, where we acknowledge that we are not superhuman, but mere mortals, in need not just of physical, but of spiritual sustenance, the kind of sustenance we can only receive in the presence of Christ. Our attempts to live out the mission of the church are futile, harmful even, unless they come from this place of deep humility and trust in the one who sends us. Jesus models for us this kind of humility in our gospel passage. Knowing that Judas is about to betray him and that his other followers will abandon and deny him, 
Jesus nevertheless responds to them not with anger or bitterness and not by asserting himself or drawing attention to his achievements, but by tenderly and unassumingly washing their feet. Peter's reaction to this unexpected move is revealing. As the Australian Catholic writer Shane Dwyer observes, in an, in an apparent rush of humility, Peter resists having Jesus wash his feet. The exchange is a reminder of how difficult it is to accept that the life of Christ offers that the life of Christ offers us is primarily something he does in, to and for us. We tend to default back to thinking we are in charge. This encounter reminds us that our role is largely to receive and to respond to what God is doing and not the other way around. It is no accident then that Jesus' parting gift to us is a meal. Just as we need to breathe, we need to eat and drink. Our human hunger and thirst keep bringing us back to the table, to the place of relationship and thanksgiving, where we are fed again and again. The deep communion with Christ and each other that we experience in this sacrament not only sustains our mission, but is its ultimate purpose. Like our breath, our movement into and out of the Eucharist forms the underlying rhythm of our life as the church. Just as the Passover meal became for the Israelites a means of recalling and re-experiencing year in and year out the saving action of God in their lives, the Eucharist establishes for us a pattern or rhythm whereby we are continually called back into Jesus' presence, entering into the mystery of his self-giving sacrificial love, a love that finds its climax on the cross. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. For the church, then, the Eucharist is like the deepest point of our breath, that still holy moment when we hold the breath, the Ruach of God, deep within our lungs, experiencing the profound and transforming presence of Christ with us before we are carried back out into the world that he calls us to love and serve. Breathe in, breathe out. Amen. Seated. 
or kneel as you prefer for the prayers of the people. Merciful God, on this the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through their message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us. On this night, he commanded them to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us. On this night, he reminded them that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the greeting of the peace. Jesus said, Peace is my last gift to you. My peace I now leave you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and that strengthens our life together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please turn to those around you and offer each other the sign of peace.
Give thanks to the Lord our God. O eternal wisdom, we praise you and give you thanks because you laid aside your power as a garment and took upon the form of a slave, choosing weakness to shame the strong. You became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, receiving honour and comfort from the hands of a woman. For God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong, and God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are. Therefore, with the woman who gave you birth, with all those who journeyed with you, befriended you, and fed you, those who touched you, and finally anointed you for death, with all who waited by the cross, and all who loved you throughout the ages, we praise you singing. Blessed is our brother Jesus, who on this night before Passover rose from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel and poured water, and washed his disciples' feet. Then while at table with those he loved, he took bread and gave you thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took a cup of wine and again giving you thanks, 
and handing the cup to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant poured out for all humanity. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Come now, tender spirit of our God. Wash us and make us one body in Christ. That as we are bound together in this gesture of love, we may no longer be in bondage to the principalities and powers that enslave creation, but may know your liberating peace, such as the world cannot give. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to sit at the table in your eternal kingdom with St. John, Mary, the mother of our Lord, the apostles and all your saints. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters present here tonight and present here tonight at home. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold what you are. Become what you receive. The body of Christ. Come. I invite you to come forward down the left hand side of the aisle facing the front to receive the communion, returning back to your seats on the right hand side. Holy Communion this evening will be served in bread only, but with the wine dipped upon it. And all are welcome to receive communion of any denomination here at St. Peter's who are baptised, including children, who may receive at the discretion of their parents. Those who do not wish to take communion may come forward for a blessing and just let me know.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. When he had eaten with his disciples, the Lord Jesus poured water into a basin and began to wash their feet, saying, This example I leave you. If there is this love among us, all will know that we are his disciples. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus said, Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. If there is this love among us, all will know that we are his disciples. So then, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, then surely you must wash one another's feet. If there is this love among us, all will know that we are his disciples. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. If there is this love among us, all will know that we are his disciples. 